Hello, welcome to video 23, Labour Market Failure. We're continuing our look at market failure, but in this video we look specifically at labour market failure, market failure in labour markets. And I want to identify three causes of market failure in labour markets. Geographic immobility of labour, occupational immobility of labour, and discrimination in the market. Okay, so let's look at each of these in turn. Starting with geographic immobility of labour. It's said to exist when workers find it difficult to relocate to areas where jobs are available. And that could be for a number of reasons. So in other words, the workers who are available for work are not where the jobs are. There's a geographic disparity between where the supply of labour is and where there is a demand for labour. And that could be caused by these factors house price differences from region to region. So classically in the UK, house prices are significantly higher in the, in, in the south, and especially southeast of the UK, compared to the north. And that makes it difficult for people to move from north to south, because if they sell their property, their home in the north, to take up work and buy a house in the south, they're not going to be able to earn enough money from the sale of their home to be able to afford a home in the south of England house price differentials are that big. Secondly, a lack of knowledge about job availability in other areas and other regions may be preventing the supply of labour from being able to relocate because they don't know what's available elsewhere. Thirdly, a reluctance to leave an area as their partner has local work uh, or there's a social network in place and family roots and their children's schooling uh, doesn't want to be disrupted. So there could be social reasons why uh, workers are unwilling to relocate to another part of the country and take up work. These are all causing geographic immobility of labour. So potential solutions to the geographic immobility of labour. Reduce regional house prices, uh, the price differentials, by building more in the south, if indeed it's the south, uh, as it is in the UK, where there are higher prices. Increase the supply, uh, boost supply, and that will lower the price. Or well, secondly, increase the flow of national job information to areas of high unemployment. Perhaps find ways which uh, local job uh, centres, job shops, uh, have more information about jobs uh, further afield in the rest of the country. Also, of course, utilising the internet uh, to spread information about job availability. Thirdly, offer relocation subsidies to workers who are prepared to move regionally. Fourthly, improve public transport to enable longer distance commuting and maybe subsidise the public transport fares as well so that people can, uh, from where they live, can, can travel a further distance to make themselves more available over a bigger area um, to be able to work in a, in a, a larger area. And, and encourage firms to relocate to areas of high unemployment which might include government departments, so government itself can relocate to areas of high unemployment, it doesn't have to be in London if we're talking about the UK, or, or with subsidies maybe firms can be encouraged to relocate into those areas where there's a lot of, those geographic areas where there's a lot of uh, unemployed people uh, looking for work and unable because of geographic immobility to move to where the jobs are or bring the jobs to them. So that's geographic immobility. Now let's look at occupational immobility of labour, also known as skills immobility. This occurs when workers possess skills that are no longer in demand in the labour market and therefore they cannot find work. They can, no one needs the skills that they possess. Causes of this occupational immobility, the main cause is structural changes in the economy. For example, the disappearance of the steel industry, the coal mining industry and the shipbuilding industries have left a lot of workers uh, skilled workers left them unemployed because their, their skills are no longer demanded. These industries have dried up in the UK. So it's a structural change in the economy leaves people stranded with skills no longer in demand. Those people suffer from skills immobility, occupational immobility. Well, potential solutions to skills immobility include retraining workers to equip them with relevant work skills of course, that's easier said than done, and it's, uh, it's questionable about whether um, 
people at the age of 50, 55 are going to be retrained in skills and by the time they're trained will they get jobs because they're, they're not far from retirement age? Or redesign education and training in schools and higher education to become more relevant to the demands of today's labour markets. In other words, uh, a more vocational training um, before people leave education, before young people leave education, in order that, to equip them with as many different skills and with relevant skills for, for the workplace uh, when they enter it. Of course, that is going to take a lot of time, so there's time lags there, and that's a possible evaluation of that solution. Right, the third kind of labour market failure I want to look at is discrimination in the market, in the labour market. Discrimination is defined as unequal treatment of workers or job applicants on the basis of personal characteristics that do not affect the worker's ability to complete a job's duties. Okay, so discrimination is, you know, it isn't discrimination to, um, to say, to reject a job applicant uh, as a bus driver because they're blind, that is not discrimination. They will not, they will not be able to fulfill the duty of the, of the job. What would be discrimination is to reject someone, uh, a job applicant and a bus driver because they're a woman or because um, they, uh, they have some disability or because of their race or religion uh, and that's, that's, that does not affect the way they could do the job. So discrimination can be on the basis of sex, race, skin colour, religion, disability, age, size. These are all ways in which workers uh, who possess certain characteristics in these categories are um, discriminated against. And how do we know it happens when discriminatory practice is always hidden behind permitted reasons for sackings and redundancy and failure to be successful in job applicants? Well, applications. Well, we know it because there is an unequal pay between men and women, called the pay gap, uh, which uh, you know is unaccountable other for them for the fact that uh, there is discrimination and higher unemployment rates among minority groups. Now, again, it could be argued that well, perhaps there are certain minority groups that have not achieved the same educational qualifications, or it could be argued that women don't get the same pay as men on average because and don't progress in the career ladder as much because women um, are the ones most likely in society to take time out to raise children and certainly they are it's the women who must pause in their careers indeed to have children uh, if they choose to do so so uh, you know you, you, maybe you will find people who argue against that nevertheless there is a pay gap between men and women for the same jobs that pay gap has reduced over the last few decades but it still exists and it varies in size from country to country and the biggest pay caps exist in the most socially conservative countries in Europe it is the Catholic countries of uh, Spain and Ireland where the gap between men and women's pay is the greatest because there is most social pressure on women uh, to to stay at home to raise children and these are more conservative countries so that, that you know we, we we take statistical evidence and we can see through unemployment rates in different ethnic minorities or between the pay gaps between men and women or the proportion of, of directors of big companies in countries that are female. In these ways we can, we can conclude that there is discrimination occurring. So solutions to discriminatory practice usually uh, can be grouped into one of these two uh, in one of these two areas, horizontal equity laws and vertical equity laws. And this concept of horizontal equity and vertical equity are useful. Uh, and you can agree or disagree on, on, on which, is, which is fairest or which is the most correct way to pr proceed uh, for a society to proceed to act against discrimination. I'm not here to discuss that, but you should be able to understand both concepts. So horizontal equity laws are laws that demand all businesses treat all workers equally, whatever their personal characteristics. Equal pay, equal opportunities, um, and punishing sex discrimination. So everyone is treated equally under horizontal equity. Everyone is treated equally, regardless of whether they're, they're white, black, male, female, able-bodied or, or disabled. Vertical equity laws, though, 
are different. Vertical equity laws are the laws which promote the preferential treatment of some groups in society with the view to negating the impact of latent systematic discrimination. For example, laws insisting that large companies employ workers with disabilities as a proportion of their workforce, or in some Scandinavian countries uh, where Parliament must have a certain proportion of female people, uh, representatives of the people, um, and 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 you know I think uh, I think there is I think is it Sweden where 40% of all parliamentarians must be women, so you know these would be examples of vertical equity where the, the law is not treating everyone equally, but gives preferential treatment to some with the objective of, of undoing the effect of inevitable discrimination. So there are European Union laws that say large companies, companies with more than 150 employees, must employ uh, a certain proportion who are registered disabled. A, a small proportion, but this creates job opportunities for, the, for, the, uh, for those people with disabilities. Okay, so laws can be either promoting horizontal or vertical equity. Okay, so I hope that gives you some idea, some, some idea of the immobility of labour through geographic and occupational reasons and also issues regarding discrimination in the labour market, uh, all of which add up to labour market failure and the government's response to labour market failure. Okay, thank you very much.